Hi folks, after five years of doing this at Bloomer Boomer, it is really interesting to see what our amazing community latches on to. Now, the way we learn what you like is kind of a cold calculating process. There is no guesswork. The thing about this digital space where I roam is that you tell us exactly what you like by clicking on it and watching or reading it. Uh, whenever you click on your, your computer or your uh, mobile device, it tells folks like me what you like and what you like is today's guest. That is uh, Gary Douglas. He is here on a return visit to Bloomer Boomer. If this is your first introduction uh, to Gary, to borrow from his biography, I will tell you a little about him. He is a best-selling author, international speaker. Gary is known for his, uh, his intensity of awareness and his incredible capacity to facilitate people to know what they know. Now, at a young age, Gary began uh, seeking a deeper awareness to life's mysteries. Along the way, he uncovered a, a new way to forward that would uh, create change in the world and in people's lives. He discovered that magic is all around us. It's something we create. It's consciousness. Gary Douglas has written several books on, uh, on subjects ranging from money, sex, relationships, magic, and communicating with animals, which offer simple and pragmatic access consciousness tools for creating change and possibilities. That is a tiny glimpse into uh, Gary Douglas. In a moment, we will find out a little bit more. Now, first, though, I would just love to get in a plug for Bloomer Boomer. It is about optimism, idealism, and realism about life's challenges, whether it's loneliness or the surprises that life brings to our mind and body. The message is simple. Embrace age, empower dreams, embrace life. We would love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and our, our lively Facebook page, live events around the country, and other cool things. Check us out, okay? We'll be right back with Gary Douglas. So our guest is best-selling author, international speaker, Gary Douglas. Gary, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, you know, you're uh, such a man of uh, so many interests. Uh, let me ask you, though, how was my introduction? Uh, did I, what did I leave out? Everything and nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, well, let's see. Well, I must have missed something. But, you know, what catches my attention is something that you talk about. It involves how you facilitate people to know what they know. Now, I really find that interesting because one of my biggest obstacles that I put in front of me is my thought of not knowing what I don't know. Now, it is a much different interpretation, but do you see my concern about not knowing what I don't know, and uh, do you understand uh, what I'm saying about it? Sure. I totally get it. And the thing is that, that you know, one of the ways in which I try to encourage people to recognize what they know is to look at the times that you knew you shouldn't do something, and you did it anyway, and it turned out exactly the way you thought it would, because that was your knowing that told you it was going to turn out that way. But, you know, you'll do it anyway. Now, it's like, I don't know about you, but I've had this thing of, I've invested sometimes in things that people said, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. And I went, okay, fine. It's only $1,500. So I invested in it. And then, of course, it didn't work. But I knew it wasn't going to work when I invested in it because I liked the person or because I thought maybe something was possible or I doubted that I knew what was true. Because I'm not, I'm not a guy who does investment normally. So because I don't have a way in which I determine what I invest in, I have made mistakes. And it's like I started to realize, wow, every time I made a mistake, I knew I shouldn't do it, but I did it anyway. And if you start to recognize that, then you start to begin to recognize you do know stuff, but we've never been told that we knew anything. We've always said, you can't know that. I was yeah. like, I, I, that, I hear you what you're saying, and, and I think part of what, what that includes is uh, to make sure that we're conscious of our, uh, what we think. And uh, something that somebody once told me is, yes, that's true, so you don't know what you don't know, but don't forget, you know, you're not stupid, so maybe you'll figure it out. Well, and maybe there are things you know that you don't have a way of explaining how you know them. And that's the thing I've noticed with most people is they don't have an explanation of how they know something, but they know it. They know it's not the right way. It's not the way that's going to work. I had uh, 
a friend who was working with animals because of the Talk to the Animals book. And she was doing some work on this horse that had a bowed tendon. And she said, where do I work on this horse? And I looked at the horse's body and I said, where do you need to be worked on? And I saw the area that was tied up. So she went up and worked on the horse's shoulder. Now, a whole shoulder should not have the effect of changing a bowed tendon. But that horse's tendon went straight. And it was it did not have a bowed tendon anymore after having its shoulder worked on. And that was an amazing shift. But, you know, luckily I had had the experience of getting rolfed years ago. And I discovered that a whole lot of things that hurt my body, the places where the lockup for them hurting was in a totally different location than where they hurt. And once those things were turned loose, all of a sudden the hurt went away. So did you just say you got rolfed? Rolf, R O L F D. Well, I haven't heard that one in a while. I, I went to I went to a rolfing uh, uh, exhibition, and it was amazing. Yeah, well, I thought it was amazing when I had it done. It's like I literally, it's like things that have been hurting me for years, the pain went away. I, when I first got Rolf, I I did the first five sessions, and I woke up in the morning. I went, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And I went, okay, what's wrong? And my body said, no pain. And I realized that for the first time in 25 years, I had no pain. And I went, Amazing. wow, that's phenomenal. Gosh. Do you, uh, is, is there anything in some of your works or anywhere that uh, you, you, know, you can talk about rolfing? Uh, I don't particularly talk about rolfing, but I do recommend it to people if they have you know, a structural disintegrity a disintegrity, structural disintegrity in their body. And it's like, and you can tell by the way people walk that they hurt. And it's like, okay, so what is it that's actually creating the pain and what is it they need to change? And so I'll go, okay, rolfing, something else. And it's like, if I get that rolfing is what they need, then I'll suggest they try rolfing. And it's amazing the number of people that it's worked on as a result of that. Oh, that's fantastic. So I think that we are close to the same age. I'm 70. I'm 70, and I think that maybe you're a, a couple of years older. Now, I'm you, 75. Okay. I knew, it was, I knew we were close. Now, you have been writing and speaking about seeking deeper awareness for us as, uh, for a long time. Uh, is your message different for people, let's say, our age compared to uh, a younger audience? Uh, it seems to work on all ages. It just, you know, it's like everybody gets it the way they get it when they get it. And the older people that I deal with are like, they're so thrilled because, I mean, they've had things, it's like because of the way I deal with things like cancer, you know, it's like I'll ask somebody, so what are you dying to get out of? And they go, what? I don't want to die. I said, I didn't ask that question. I said, what are you dying to get out of? And then they'll sit there for a second and all of a sudden they go, oh my God, I'm dying to get out of the job I have. Well, have you considered quitting? Yes, but how am I going to earn a living? I said, well, that's a different question. But if you're dying to get out of your job, you know, like creating cancer to get out of your job is probably not your best choice. Would you like to choose something different? That's good. And uh, you, you, thank you for, for explaining it that way. Uh, something that we are beginning here at Bloomer Boomer, which has not yet gone public and launched, but it's a way that uh, people over a certain age at 50, 60, 70 might want to take on uh, some job that they love. So exactly. uh, we're starting a, a program to show uh, some of the, the jobs that are available and in demand, get good pay. And so maybe that's a, a good solution for, for that example. And, and you know, well, uh, what, one thing. of the things I've noticed, like the guy, I, I hired a guy who was over 50 to be my personal assistant. And it's like, and I needed somebody to basically be a husband in my life because I didn't have time to get the cars done. I didn't have time to do a whole bunch of stuff because I was too busy working. So I started paying him to handle all the elements that basically as a husband I had handled when I was married. And he was brilliant at it. He was amazing. And then I moved out of Santa Barbara. And so he, I couldn't take him with me because his wife wouldn't let him go. Damn it. <laughs> and, and, you know, and then I got here to Texas and I couldn't find anybody who 
wanted to do the job. So I hired a 25-year-old and he was crappy. I hired a 26-year-old and he was crappy. And I hired a 30-year-old and he was crappy. And they, none of them lasted because none of them knew how to complete anything. And the one thing us older folks have is the ability to know how to complete things. Because if we didn't complete them, we didn't get to this age. And it's really amazing to find that one of the gifts of being older is that you know how to complete things, you know how to get things done, and you know how to ask for help when you need it. Where the younger generation goes, well, I can't do it, so therefore I won't. And it's a very different world because the younger generation has been raised to believe that if you can't do it, don't bother. And it's like my generation was raised, if you can't do it, find somebody you can. Find somebody who can teach you how to do it. Create yeah. something different. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, I think that a lot of the uh, companies, if you want to go that route, they know that. I, they've got experience and they know that there are certain uh, work ethics that you might find in an older generation that are really valuable. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, but unfortunately, a lot of uh, those of us at a certain point in life, we, we aren't aware of that. And yeah. uh, so that's uh, really encouraging and I think right on. It, well, one of the things, I don't know whether you watched the movie The Intern, uh -huh. De Niro. Oh, yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Brilliant movie because it talks about how this guy, knowing the things he knows, teaches the kids how to be better people. And it's like, and we really have to get that your experience is something that's a gift, not a problem. Your age is not the problem. Your age is the possibility of a different reality that is still needed and still desired. And there's a lot of opportunity out there. And, and thanks for bringing that up because uh, uh, that is something that we'll be talking about more. Well, um, you know, I just got to ask you, Gary, uh, for folks who want to connect more with you, find out more, uh, how can they go about doing that? You can contact me at Gary Douglas at accessconsciousness.com. And it's like, and, you know, we have free videos. We have all kinds of things that are available. And if you have a particular, you know, subject you are interested in, we have like 30 books on different subjects and all of them work. Well, great show. You can see it again on YouTube and at Bloomer Boomer. We have other shows coming up with some amazing guests. So please like us on Facebook and visit us over at BloomerBoomer.com. Until next time, so long.